this is different. There's good adjustments and there's bad adjustments. I've been making the bad kind. I see that now. Now I see that they were all adjustments that disguised my core, that hid my fundamental essence, that turned me into a deceiver. You were right. I was honing bad adjustments into a way of life. In the end, it didn't even pay off. Back when I was living in LA, I, I never told you this, but I went out on a date with a man who said he was in the movie business. Seemed unlikely, but since I myself wanted to be in the movie business, I went out on the date. I remember it was winter because he had on an enormous coat. The coat should have been a giveaway as to what he did in the movie business. Not acting, not directing, certainly not producing. It wasn't that kind of coat. It was an accounting kind of coat. He must have done some sort of movie business accounting, but that's not the point. The point is, as we're walking down Hollywood and Vine, a man in front of us tosses some litter. And I don't remember what variety of litter, but I rushed to pick it up, and then I rushed to shove it in his now empty hand. It was a very big hand connected to a very big man. My accountant date was terrified, but I stand my ground until the very big man puts his item in a bin. I relish the momentary surge of power. But that is the last time I see the accountant. He claims my actions imperiled his safety. You know I can't help it. You tried to stop me. You and mom. But I was fast. I could grab a handful of ground litter and stuff it in my baby mouth before anybody noticed. It wasn't until I could walk that I learned the satisfaction of replacing my mouth with a litter receptacle. Adults praised me for my efforts. Look at that little girl put that disgusting diaper in the receptacle instead of her mouth. But I didn't do it for the praise. I did it to restore the tranquility of the land, even if that land was only a thin strip of grass between the sidewalk and the path. But after the accountant, it occurred to me that picking up litter was going to complicate potential human entanglements. What was I gonna do? Giving up litter pickup was not possible. I had to figure out a way to keep it unnoticeable. Thus, the ensuing bad adjustments. One, only pick up litter that is near the sidewalk or path. That way, I keep it casual. Get it into the bin before anybody notices. This is particularly successful with dry items, a cup, a napkin, a paper plate. Two, don't let the conversation lag. Keep talking through the litter pickup and bin delivery. This works best when talking to my date about my date. Oh, you're such a great conversationalist. So attentive, so witty. Someone as handsome as you usually isn't so funny. Blah, blah, blah. Don't give him a chance to say, what are you doing with that litter? Which he won't if he's hearing how accomplished he is in bed. And, of course, the item has to be dry. But what about wet items? There are a lot of them. It's harder to be nonchalant about the wet items. My scheme, spot them in advance, draw attention to them. A little outrage helps. Oh, look, some unthinking elf has left a pizza slice right there where someone can step on it and slip and seriously injure themselves. Then there's the bin overflowing situations littering the sidewalk. That's when I use my rat ploy. Ugh, 
I'd better get this bin overflow back into the bins or the rats will surely arrive. And once the rats have identified a food source, there's no getting rid of them. All of these adjustments were for items along the sidewalk or path, but what about far flung items? There's no way I can casually leave the sidewalk or path, tramp through the tall weeds and pick up litter way over there. In those instances, I memorize the location and return to take care of it alone. Which leads me to my first good adjustment. And my second, yesterday, while I was on a walking date, I recognized the glint of a bottle way over there in the tall grass, the very definition of far flung. I bite my cheek, bite my tongue, I turn the other cheek, comforted by the knowledge that I will return to pick up the litter later. Later turns out to be first light this morning. I make my way through the tall grass and discover a trove of tossed bottles, their empty cardboard case, and several empty chip bags. This was ground zero for a full blown shindig. I was gonna have to make multiple trips to completely delitter the area. I use the cardboard case to hold the empties, make my way to the bin, dump the bottles. I'm on my way back to the crime scene when I hear, you can't do that. It's a lady. It's a lady talking. It's a lady talking holding a big garbage bag. I'm picking up litter, I say. That's not litter she says. I beg your pardon, but I know litter and this is litter. That's not litter, that's recycle. Not when it's lying in the grass, lying in the grass, it's litter. She reaches into her back pocket and brings out another garbage bag. She has two garbage bags. I am gobsmacked by her preparedness. She holds up one, then the other. This for recycle, this for litter. My heart is racing. I can't speak. The lady says, stand aside. She reaches into the bin, retrieves the beer bottles, and begins placing them in her recycle bag. She's wearing rubber gloves, gloves! And dangling from her belt is a pincher, a litter picker upper pincher, like the professionals use. I finally find my voice. Are you with the city? The city, she says with disdain. The city doesn't separate. They co-mingle. I've never heard the term before, but I know exactly what she means. Perhaps they separate later. That's what I do, I say, trying to sound honest. Weren't you just going to leave those bottles and cardboard in this can? Yes, but I plan on coming back later. I'm lying. I have always seen my job as ending once the litter is in the bin, but I don't want to seem lesser in this stranger's eyes. To mitigate the lie, I make an internal vow to never be a commingler again. It's a good adjustment. How do I know? Because it brings me closer to the me I want to be. And this next, I don't consider a lie either, but rather a second good adjustment. The sight caught me unawares. You see, without my gloves and bags, she looks stunned. Why would you come out without your gloves and bags? I am nothing if not fast on my feet. Ugh, because I cleared this area yesterday. Yesterday, 
is a hundred years in litter. Truer words were never spoken. My face is getting hot. She turns away from me and resumes putting the beer bottles in her bag. I can't let her get away. Why don't, why don't I take the litter bag and you take recycle? She is surprised. You mean you want to help? You'd be helping me. Oh, and she would be as I begin imagining a future of shared litter pickup. We stare at each other for a minute and I partially confess. I saw this area yesterday, but I was with someone, someone who wouldn't understand. You should never be with someone who wouldn't understand. I know that now. She takes the pincher from her belt and holds it out to me. Well, she says, do you know how to use one of these? My hands are trembling as I reach out to take it. I can learn.